Good. Which formula or equations do you believe are the most important to memorize? Um, here's what I would say. I think people overestimate, Noah, the amount of math on both exams, 65 and 66. Most of the math is about inputs and outputs, not can you actually do the math. You know, I had a guy hit the button on the tour. He goes, Dean, I'm not paying you to teach me math. You give me two numbers, I can solve for the third. He ended up passing, but he said, I wish I would have spent a little more time instead of reverse engineering the formula, you know, kind of know what it is. Now, that being said, I would be comfortable with liquidity balance sheet calculations. Working capital, current ratio, asset test ratio, and then solvency debt to total capitalization. Mainly, it's can you pull it out of the lineup? Working capital can best be described as. I'd be able to do current yield and total return. Uh, I would be able to understand, not actually calculate, but I would be able to understand the basics of valuation techniques like uh, book value, like discounted cash flows applied to a stock dividend discount model, that kind of thing. And I like it, Brian. That's exactly how I teach you to say it's going to be an ABCD. And then you pick it out of the ratio. De definitely should be able to do PE ratio. Uh, Brian, I'm giving your board. Uh, what do you think? Did I miss any major math on the, on the 60? No, I, and thank you for giving it to me because I, I deal with this question. I just talked to three other people today alone about this. And Dean, we're going to blame the textbooks because that's what I do is blame the textbooks. They, yeah. they infuse so much math in this thing. No wonder people get anxious over all the math formulas. I'm going to tell you the Series 66, on average, has one calculator question. Yeah. One. <laughs> series 65, four or five, and that's it. Now, might they ask you, like Dean said, about inputs into some of these formulas, perhaps, uh, and the liquidity ratios and leverage ratio from balance sheets are a good place to start. I've had 37,000 people tell me they don't even see a sharp ratio, yeah. except as a wrong answer sometimes. So there's very little math. And I want to give you an example of a question that I'll let you decide if it's math related or not. Now, by the On way, the before floor, you do that, Brian, before you do yeah. that, I just want to comment. That's kind of Noah, what I was saying. It's mainly a recognition of that answer set, right? So right. please note, they're going to, Brian might say, what best describes current assets by current liabilities. It's mainly recognition. So let, I'm sorry, but I just want to intervene. It's more about the answer set than it right. is doing right. that. Exactly. Which of the following liquidity ratios is generally highest? Question mark. Um, I like it. Maybe series 65, but probably more likely 66. Something like this. That's where your math questions come in. Which of the following liquidity ratios is typically highest? Question mark. Okay. Yeah. Well, remember, debt to equity is solvency, not liquidity. Price to earnings is not liquidity. And asset test, ooh, you know, you're taking out the inventory. So the current ratio would be the answer to Brian's question. So I, I always tell you people, you've got to know the liquidity ratios. And as Dean just said, <laughs> he was right on top of that. The leverage ratio is debt to equity. Price yeah, to earnings yeah. is, is just a technical indicator of something. Yeah, sort of price to earnings is a valuation technique, right? They're the test questions about value investors versus right. growth investors. And I bet most of us who are taking the 65, 66 know that the current ratio includes the inventory. Therefore, right. it's going to produce a larger number, yeah, right? I like it. So that's kind of how your math question no, I, I, I do think it's mainly recognition. So, no, I let, that's what Sia Brian will go with me on this is go this far. If you tell me that you missed a NASA exam, 65 or 66, because of math, I'm going to say, Noah, you had bigger problems elsewhere, my friend. You know, you could guess B and assign those to the universe and you'd still be in the uh, in the mix, right? So I hope that was helpful. Uh, but, yeah, I think people overestimate. And I agree with you, Brian. Oh, my God. You know, yeah. Chuck uh, Lowenstein is the subject matter expert for NASA exams at Kaplan. I love him. He's eccentric. He knows that I talk about him. Uh, I don't know, but all test prem vendors are guilty of this. But Chuck will have a huge, highly involved math question. And what frosts me, Brian, is when he starts the rationale by saying, 
you won't see this on your exam. And then you go, well, then why did you get 15 pages and four questions? So yet another reason, Noah, why you might want somebody to distill those test prep uh, materials with all that math 